saluting the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Could everyone just please stand and um, we would like to have a moment of silence for all of the lives that have been lost in Las Vegas, all of the people who have been injured and obviously all the people who have been affected and traumatized by that. So please join me. Thank you so much. <coughs> okay. Um, we will call this meeting to order. Unfortunately, the mayor is dealing with a very serious public safety issue this evening in the city and asked me to fill in for him, so I will do so. Um, the first item we have is the hearing of visitors. And this evening, we have Mrs. Frances Arigia. Good evening, Mrs. Arigia. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Ariaga, Mrs. Francis Ariaga, welcome. Thank you so much. Please join us. Okay. Good evening. Um, we um, have this opportunity for the public to address the school committee, and um, at, in, in these moments, we provide uh, approximately three minutes and the school committee listens to the presentation or discussion and then we take um, the issue that is presented under advisement. Um, we don't get into a back and forth, um, but um, we welcome you and um, thank you for attending. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. My name is Francis Arriaga and I'm a pastor here at a local church in Brockton. I've been ministering for about eight years, but I'd like to read my speech tonight. Um, it says, good evening, my, my name is Pastor Francis Arriaga. In this past April, I lost my son, Isaiah Cabang, to reckless driving. My son, who attended Brockton High School, was only 15 years old. And no mother should have gone through such a tragedy. And I sincerely thank everyone for the unwavering support that they have shown me and my family in these past few months. Since then, I have made my mission to prevent such tragedies from occurring. And through a collaborative effort, I have established a nonprofit called ESA's World Foundation. The overall goal is to provide education and intervention pertaining to youth driver safety. Our mission statement reads, to honor victims and families whose lost loved ones caused by car accidents and by mandating safety legislation pertaining to driver education and parental involvement. And facilitating educational workshops centered on prevention in order to decrease reckless driving and increase driver safety and awareness in Brockton and throughout the state of Massachusetts. We have all seen and heard about many pedestrians and vehicular accidents that have occurred here in Brockton, as you may know. And like you, I am tired of reading about frequencies and severities of such occurrences. I'm sorry, excuse me. And one of the main goals of ESA's Well Foundation is to provide educational workshops with other affected family members by giving testimonials throughout the schools within the district. I stand before you today with a simple ask. Will you help me create a pathway for me to enter the schools in order to provide an educational workshop for the youth that will educate them on dangers of distracted driving with the hopes of saving lives? I certainly hope that, I, ho I certainly hope so, and thank you in advance for considering this, reca this request. I have had assistance and support of many people in helping me move these things forward, including the city planner and mayoral candidate, Jimmy Perea and BHS special education teacher, Angel Cosme. We have established multiple meetings to spread the mission of ESA's World Foundation, including meetings with the Massachusetts State Representative, including Reb Du Bois, Cassidy, and Cronin, Mayor Carpenter, and City Council President Robert Sullivan, and Senator Michael Brady. While establishing ESA's World Foundation, we learned about high school public service announcements contests and worked with Mubi and Mubi Productions with the permission of BHS Principal Dr. Murray. Thank you, Dr. Murray and to the submit one minute PCA using Isaiah's friends in the video, which are here with me tonight. I am thrilled to report that we came in first place in the state
freshman, sophomore category, which was this past Thursday. This PCA will be shown throughout the state and the youth and I were recently recognized at a conference in the Boston DOT Secretary Stephanie, with Stephanie Paula. She is the CEO. I would like to show you the video now, but before I do, I would like the Superintendent Kathy Smith and the school committee to contact me in the near future in order to set up a time to talk about logistics and educational workshops that I am proposing here today. With that said, thank you for your time and consideration. Know that I am committed to use the resources of this foundation to save lives and to create a safe to brought them. Thank you and God bless you and please enjoy the video. So this sounds like something that um, would be perfect for that subcommittee and um, uh, our own Mr. Sullivan is the chair of that subcommittee so I think that's something that um, can occur. Um, we're very, very sorry for your Thank loss. You so much. I want you to make sure you know that. Thank you. And um, unfortunately today, I believe that's where the mayor might be. There's a horrible, horrible accident in Brockton again today. Um, yes. So it's a very real issue in a city that we all know is so busy with vehicles on the road. So we thank you for attending. Thank and, you um, for having me here. And you Pastor, you know, uh, my door has always been open to you. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. That you've been able to um, certainly put this into a good works and in memory of your son. Um, and again, we're, we're very pleased to be able to support you in any way we can. Thank you so much. So we will move for, for a moment and um, we'll watch. <coughs> Thank you all, and um, we certainly appreciate that. Okay, so the next item on our agenda is the consent agenda. The consent agenda is the bundling of routine business uh, before the school committee, and it's the opportunity of each school committee member to remove any particular item for further discussion. Um, is there anyone? who would like to discuss any of the issues under the consent agenda? No? Okay. Oh, sorry, Mark. Yes, sir. Mr. DiAgostino. Uh, item A. Okay, we will remove item A. Anyone else? Okay. How about a motion on B, C, and D? Motion to approve B, C, and D. Any further discussion? All in favor? Okay, Mr. DiAgostino, the floor is yours. Um, I just had a couple of brief questions on this item. <clears throat> uh, do we know the number of parents opting to homeschool their children in our district? Is that increasing, decreasing, about level? Where's that heading? You know, Mr. DiAgostino, I didn't bring that data. We can certainly get it for you. We can have it in the Friday packet. Okay. 
Um, I, I would say it's probably increasing. One of the things that, that is now available to parents is a virtual school, online school. There's lots of opportunities. You can imagine with internet, parent support. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's uh, any different than what we've had by large numbers, but um, we can get through that information. Okay, and then kind of tied to my reasoning for asking <coughs> that, um, do we know, like are there particular reasons that we're aware of that cause parents to choose this option over sending their kids to our, our district? I know some of them are religious. Okay. Uh, you know, parents choose not to have them in, in a public school. Um, you know, others could be parents that, you know, certainly there's a large network uh, of parents that uh, have a collaboration with other parents and feel the time is better spent where many of them are certified teachers or a number of them are and they want to educate their own children um, and go at, at a pace that they feel is important, take them out to museums and opportunities. Um, it's, it's their choice. Okay, I was just curious. Yeah. Yeah. We can get that data for you uh, at a meeting we can certainly make public. Um, I can certainly invite uh, Sharon Wolder now oversees that office and I would give her an opportunity to gather that information. She's been transitioning with uh, Dr. Uh, Tarasi um, who has been approving those for the past you know, number of years. Right. So we can have um, <coughs> Chief Officer Sharon Wolder come and report uh, at a future meeting. Okay, yeah, I, like I said, I was just curious as to you know, what the trend was and you know, if there were particular reasons and how, I, I guess my thing was, you know, is it reflecting on the perception of, of the district? And you know, um, so I guess that's kind of what, why I was looking for that information. So. I appreciate that being in the packet. That'd be great. Sure. Um, on, on that vein, it, when you homeschool a child, there is no MCAS requirement, correct? Correct, but they do have to show progress. So is there a grade level achievement test or something that is provided? Nothing. Okay. I'm, I'm looking to Dr. Cancel. They do have to show some kind of progress. Yes, but they don't have to pass any tests. Correct. And the colleges have to take that into consideration. Same okay. thing as you go to Cardinal Spellman, uh, you go to a private religious school. There is not uh, a state requirement that they pass MCAS to, um, to get their high school credential. Okay, Any, anyone else on that issue? Mr. Sullivan. Just what happens to the Chapter 70 money on those kids? We don't receive Chapter 70 money for students that are homeschooled. Does anybody get it? Uh, no, not unless they do, I believe, a virtual school, and then that does count um, as money that the virtual school would, re would receive for that student. But then there are mandates for a student that uh, chooses virtual school, they would have to pass MCAS. That would be a state-sanctioned program. Okay, thank you. Mr. D'Agostino, since it was your item, would you like to make a motion? Yes. Um, motion to approve um, item A of the consent agenda, the home education requests. Second. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Okay. Consent agenda is complete. Madam <coughs> Superintendent, communication and report of Superintendent of Schools. We have wonderful news this evening on a number of fronts. So one thing I would like to do um, is I'm asking our communication director, Michelle Bolton, to put up some things that we're going to be talking about tonight that I would consider good news stories. We had a very busy day in the district. You're going to hear about visitors from the Confucius Institute uh, supporting our students learning the Chinese language. Um, you're going to uh, see the rededication of the, uh, some pictures of the Kevin Wiley um, playground that we'll talk about, I know, uh, into the meeting. And also we have um, a young man visiting us from the Brookfield School Grade 2, uh, Joshua Ostenberg. And I want to show you some pictures before I begin by inviting Joshua to come up here. So let me step away and show you a day uh, in the Brockton Public Schools today. <coughs> There are Chinese visitors from Confucius Institute. 
in Brockton High School received a beautiful award today. See Dr. Murray and myself, um, this performance was second to none. I was so proud of our students from the Plouffe in Brockton High School that welcomed them, <coughs> cheered for them, uh, enjoyed the very differences in the cultures. Uh, as I said, it was fabulous. This was on stage right here at Brockton High. Can you imagine that? From music to dance, the biggest cheer was for the Bruce Lee um, performers. And of course, Kevin Riley, and I know I want to thank a couple of our school committee members that were able to be there this afternoon. This was the transfer of the playground from the Gilmore to the Barrett Russell. Um, again, a beautiful day. You see the children enjoying the um, set aside area. Uh, our facilities department, Mr. D'Agostino and Mr. Sullivan, you know, thank you for speaking and representing our school committee. Uh, parents, uh, family members, uh, teachers, students, uh, the family was very, very pleased and a very successful day in the Brockton Public Schools. So Mr. Minicello, will you join me? So without further ado, you saw a picture up there of one of our students. Uh, second grader from the Brookfield School, Joshua Ostenberg. And I'm going to invite Joshua to come and join Mr. Minicello and myself. Josh, can you come up here? Here you go, buddy. Josh, we're going to put you right in the middle of us. And I love, I want you to make sure you see Josh's shirt, Brockton Kids Count, our campaign to support our youngsters. So what I heard was when we had open houses at every one of our schools and at the Brookfield School, we, of course, had the big jugs that you saw there. And this came about on opening day when our teachers contacted us in Brockton and said we need to do something with the hurricane relief efforts. Little did we realize that the hurricanes and the weather would continue and continue, and there were many people that we needed to support. So during the open houses, these jugs, water jugs, were everywhere looking for donations. And the principal of the Brookfield School, Margo Masson, sent us a picture of Joshua uh, taking something very special to him. And he is like many, many other youngsters in the Brockton Public Schools. Josh, you represent so many youngsters across our whole school district that are giving and caring about other people. And Brookfield School is choose to be nice, isn't it? So can you tell us a little bit about what you did and why you did it? Mm -hmm. What can you tell me? Um, I did it because when I was talking to my auntie, she told me to donate my birthday money, and I thought about it, and I said I should donate it. And you took all that birthday money and put it in that big jug. Mm -hmm. And when you and I had a chance to talk, when I came to visit your classroom, we talked about other youngsters, whether it's in the Houston area or the Florida area or Mexico, because this is all going to the Red Cross and we talked about being able to support probably some youngster who's in second grade in some other part of our country or another country, and you gave of something that was very special. So can you tell us what you were going to, I asked you what you were going to spend that money on. What did you tell me? I was gonna spend it on the wrestler figures because I love wrestling. <laughs> you do, and I heard you have a wrestling ring at home and you have, you have a lot of fun with your wrestling figures. So Josh, we have something special for you. So on behalf of the Brockton Public Schools, we want to give you something special because you gave something special of you to help out so many other people. And again, for every youngster out there, I know that you all have been giving from your heart and we truly appreciate that. So thank you very much, Josh. Do you want to say anything else to us? Um, um, speaking of the hurricane, when I, when, uh, my grandma and grandpa sometimes go to Florida when it's um, December and they're going to check to see if the house is wrecked. Well, let's hope that it's okay and they'll be able to report back to you. Mm -hmm. Do you want to see what's in that bag? Mm -hmm. Let's see what's in there. Can I help you? <laughs> I'm pretty good at I'm doing ribbons, so let's see. What do you think's in here? I don't know. You don't know? Mm -hmm. I see what's in there. Mommy green, 
Can you tell us who they are? This guy's name is Roman Reigns. And this is Neville. Wow, good so, job. So will they be able to go in your ring? Uh -huh. OK, and Josh, we're so proud of you. And thank you for representing all our Brockton Public School students. Let's have a hand for Josh. <laughs> Good job, buddy. We're very proud of you. We'll take this. You don't want the tissue, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mom and Dad. And again, I can't re reiterate enough that um, when this happened, we started school. We collected last week. You heard us talk about 25 boxes being shipped from our, our teachers, our support staff, uh, people all over um, our district. And again, uh, this is the kind of generosity. I also will tell people we have jugs in every one of the schools. We've had open houses. There are events going on. The jugs are, are pretty prominent. Many of them have the big yellow ribbon on them. So we hope to finish the collections by the end of October and give them to the American Red Cross to support uh, our people all over. And now I want to go to, again, this is, this is nice tonight, go to another wonderful story. And I would like to um, start by inviting down uh, Eric Pimentel and uh, Aaron Long from our Chartwells company. We have some recognitions this evening that I will talk about. I know they have some special recognitions also. I think many of you know you hear us talk about Chartwells. Uh, this is not just a food service provider. This is a partnership. Do you want to sit at the table and talk to us first, and then we'll come up? This is a partnership. Um, Chartwells is part of so many things in our district. You know, they are part of our blessings in a backpack. They are part of making sure every child has breakfast in the morning. They are part of a teaching classroom that we recently had that was outside. They are part of events that are happy. They are a part of events that sometimes are sad. They make sure that they have a presence, and all of that comes from wonderful leadership, not only leadership from our regional offices, our national office, but certainly we have a very special group of people here that are our leaders in the Brockton Public Schools. So we're pleased to have you this evening and uh, please share with us the good news. Compass Group, which is the parent company of Chartwells, has a program. It's a business excellence and a recognition program called Be A Star. And every year we nominate in our region, the Northeast region, um, for nominees for salaried manager of the year, account of the year, and hourly associate of the year. So this year I was pleased to nominate Tom Burke, the food service manager here, the general manager here in Brockton for regional manager of the year which he was selected and he's gotten that recognition. Um, furthermore, the regional nominations then go to our corporate headquarters at sector level and seeing the nomination, our president and the committee um, selected Brockton as the account of the year nationally. So it's a huge um, honor here for Brockton Public Schools and our partnership with you and I'm really pleased to be here tonight to recognize the team that's here in Brockton. And just to echo what Aaron said, um, Tom was among 150 managers within our region, and Brockton was selected overall uh, from over 600 school districts across the country. And for those who may not know, this is the second time in the last 10 years that Brockton has been recognized as the National Account of the Year, which is a great honor. And as the superintendent said, it's a wonderful partnership because Tom does a great job working with the Brockton staff and his staff, some of the gentlemen here this evening, our dietitian, I know, uh, works with the community as well, and we're pleased and proud to be part of the community here. Um, and it's great to get some recognition, not only for Tom and his team, but the many fine men and ladies that make it happen every day on behalf of the students. So uh, we appreciate this opportunity. And, and I want to make sure people know that Tom was nominated by his colleagues um, for excellence, they're rated on excellence in food service, commitment to the community, workplace safety, cultivating an environment of diversity and inclusion. And along with that, you know, we're also recognizing the team. I think we have Ken, Pete, and Mike 
um, Kate and Karen and the entire team. And again, we talked about making sure breakfast in the classroom happened, blessings in a backpack that has come before you, uh, making sure we're a community eligibility site, and that's feeding, again, breakfast and lunch to all of our students. Uh, grant awards, you know, community outreach. They take part in parent academy workshops. Uh, and the best thing we had, and I know, Erin, you've got something to show us at some point, the outdoor classroom was wonderful and was truly a teaching tool for our students up at Brockton High School just a couple of weeks ago. So would you now like to come up here and we'll, sure. do you want to show us first or invite Tom and the team to come down? What would you like? Why don't I show the mobile teaching kitchen video since Very I'm good. sitting and then we can do the presentation that of the award. perfect. Um, so for background, um, a new program with Chartwells that just began this year is called the Mobile Teaching Kitchen. And it's basically um, food network stage in a shipping container. So it travels throughout the country. It's only been to maybe half a dozen locations on the East Coast, but we were fortunate enough to schedule it to come to Brockton the second week of September. So our own chef, Mike, working with our dietitian, Kate, and working very closely with Mary Ellen Corain to um, arrange for some students to come outside in the, during the second week of September. We had the shipping container outside, the lights and the television, and it was really exciting. We had some special needs students as well as some culinary arts students over the course of two days that came outside and were actually able to prepare with Mike, Chef Mike and Chef Ken a healthy meal, and then they had lunch afterwards, and then Kate gave them a nice nutrition education about the benefits of eating healthy. So I have a quick 45 second or so video, if I can pull it up. So should we invite the team down? Sure. Uh, Director uh, Tom Burke, uh, his team. We have all the guys tonight. Congratulations, Tom. So this is for his salary manager of the year for the region, the Northeast region. Tom will be representing the Brockton team um, down in Orlando in a couple of weeks, and he'll receive another award for the district for the account of the year nationally. So he's got a, a nice party to go to in a couple of weeks. So Tom, on behalf of Chatwells and me and everybody here, thank you. That's beautiful. Yes, Can we have everybody in? The whole Chatwell's team also received an award, Erin. The national, which we don't have a physical award yet. Let's see if we can get everybody in. Everybody in? Let's please give them a round of applause for the service they give to our community. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's wonderful. Thank you. Aaron, best thank best you outdoor classroom. It was delicious. It was a lot of fun. It was a beautiful day. Congratulations. Okay, it's nice to have so much good news. 
Okay. You know, dealing with Tom is a pleasure when, um, when different events take place. Um, you know, in particular, there's a couple over at West that are very nice. The um, gentleman's breakfast and the ladies tea. And, um, he, you know, he always steps up. His team is always so good to us. Um, he's a very generous and warm person. And, um, uh, you know, when you approach him about something special, um, he's always there. He's just very on top of everything. And, um, you know, I think his whole team reflects his, the tone that he sets. So we are very fortunate to have you, Tom. Thank you. I also, Some um, more good news, Superintendent? Well, What's next? <laughs> All right, this is a great night. <laughs> Let's go. I should share these more often. Well, I'm sorry to take, a, to take us down a bit. I'll now talk about MCAS 2.0. <laughs> oh, great. Okay. So uh, districts uh, across the Commonwealth uh, by the 13th of December uh, need to make decisions uh, based on computer-based testing of our students, grades 3 through 8. The recommendation from uh, Department of Elementary and Secondary Education is to have computer base for grades four, five, seven, and eight. And we will not be requesting a waiver. We will be requesting that our students, and this is a discussion we had last year, will take the test online. And the reason for that is simple. We've had discussions about what's ahead. Next year, your present, your present ninth graders at Brockton High School will be taking their test as 10th graders online in May of 2019. That being said, we have to continue to prepare our students. And when we talk about technology, and we talk about one-to-one -one devices, so our students have that as part of their practice every day in all of their classes, and teachers are comfortable. We are not a one-to-one -one school uh, for devices to students yet. We're a one-to-many. So we're working with Dan Vigent. You know that we've had conversations uh, with Mayor Carpenter about opportunities in every way possible, our city supporting an increase in technology for our students. So I'll continue to keep you updated. And also uh, in that same um, memo from the acting commissioner, Jeff Wolfson, you heard mentioned uh, earlier about the students possibly coming from Puerto Rico. And there are many communities, uh, Brockton included, it might not be our largest population, um, I have had conversations with uh, bilingual uh, director, again, uh, Kelly Jones, about uh, students, the possibility of students coming. We don't have numbers yet, but one of the things that the commissioner made very clear, and in case there are any questions, I want to make it clear, that under the McKinney-Vento Act, which does protect and has a definition for homelessness when people have a loss of housing, the following things need to be kept in mind. Students who have lost their housing must be immediately enrolled in school even if they do not have documentation with them. Students may not be held out of school for lack of documentation, including academic records, medical immunization records, birth certificates, or guardianship records. Schools should take prompt steps to determine a student's educational needs and ensure access to services for which the students are eligible. Homeless education liaisons, and that is uh, Karen McCarthy in our district, uh, should provide verification of students' homelessness to food service directors to ensure prompt access to free school meals. And because you are the district that you are, you are a trauma-sensitive district. We are a district that is inclusive and welcoming. We are a district that feeds every youngster. We have a, a parent uh, information center, student registration center, that is able to work with many of these things. You bet, know back in 2010, we did have a large population. I want to say about 200. Uh, students came from Haiti during the earthquake in January, I believe, of 2010. It did have an impact on our district. Um, I did mention uh, earlier in one of the meetings that we had that there have been superintendents requesting from DESE that that October 1st date, if in fact there is going to be an influx in a number of our urban centers or wherever, that they take a look at that date and possibly push it out. So that is already something that is being uh, presented uh, to the commissioner. Any questions on that? Okay, uh, moving forward, as far as uh, I mentioned our October 1st date, um, we presently have uh, in the district, and again, we're still um, 
getting information in, but the number right now is 17,072 students in our district for this year. As I said, although it is the October 1st enrollment data, there are still things that uh, we are processing and transmitting to the Department uh, of Elementary and Secondary Education. We also um, did have a, a discussion um, about our kindergarten classes, which I reported to you, our numbers uh, when I was last here, the numbers are up to 1276. They're continuing to rise. We do not have everybody listed. We are being very careful because we do have a number of red zones. Red zones mean the numbers are large. They're large at the Angelo. The Hancock is in red. We have George, and these are the gen ed classes. Um, they're large uh, at the Gilmore. We have large numbers, as I said, in a number of our uh, SEI classes. So we are looking at uh, all of those numbers, and I'll continue to make recommendations to you, which is what I mentioned this evening um, in our earlier finance uh, subcommittee meeting. I also want to report um, on our diversity task force. So they are meeting the first Monday of every month. Uh, they're meeting at the central administration office. We do have a core group of people. We're presently uh, putting together and approving our bylaws, which talk about people being able to come in and be part of the group as official voting members. Uh, this is a group in all my years here, I am very pleased that this group came in last October. They have been committed to moving forward. We have had a number of setbacks when we talked about having job fairs and we talk about um, trainings for hiring uh, diversity in mind, working with our principals. So last night we actually had the opportunity to interview a couple of consultants uh, willing to come in and work with us in probably a limited fashion, knowing the situation we're in uh, budgetary wise, but I'm very pleased that the committee is continuing to move the work forward, talking about making sure that we have uh, people selecting our district when we do have opportunities for them, finding ways to train our principals. Obviously the most important things are qualifications, licensure, certifications, et cetera. But that being said, um, we continue to also have programs for our youngsters with the Educator Rising program. So I did want to update you uh, in that. We continue to uh, move forward with that. I also had um, a number of calls from some of you on Friday. I had an opportunity to go to the Brookfield School. I know um, school committee um, men, woman, Azak, had called me about concerns that she was hearing from people living in the Brookfield area. If you know the Brookfield area with uh, John Drive, and I think it's Sully, you have a four-way stop sign very close to where you enter the area for the schools. And if you look at the 1960, these schools, the Ashfield, the Brookfield, they were built in the middle of a neighborhood that had many, many youngsters. And I guarantee, and I know Mr. Minicello, you were one of those youngsters, most of those children, and we actually filled those schools, walked to school. There were not parents, there might have been a few buses, there were not parents you know, trying to get to work, driving their kids in the large numbers that we now have. I got to the Brookfield very early on Friday. Uh, I had talked to the school police about having a presence so we could really assess the situation. Um, I, I will tell you this, it was probably one of the best things I've done. I was able to have conversations with parents walking their children. I introduced myself. We had conversations about traffic patterns, about safety. I was able to uh, talk to parents in cars. Uh, there was a line. The one thing that was brought to me at the end of it, the principal said, when she looked at the timing with the buses coming in and out, with the parents coming in and out, it was probably elongated by 10 minutes because people were looking at the stop signs. They were taking time at the four-way stop to, you know, again, go back and forth. Um, buses were very careful coming in and making sure, you know, staff members coming in. So this is what has to really happen at every school. We will continue to be out there assessing the patterns. Every school, we keep shaking our heads about the numbers of cars coming in and how schools were built. Even some of our newer schools that were built, for instance, the George School, you know, again, smack in the middle of a neighborhood with not a lot of space. So uh, I want to thank Lieutenant Mills and his team that continue to work with us on finding patterns and ways to get cars in and out to make sure um, we have a safe place for our children to come to school. I want to tell you that one of my goals, I think I came back to the office, and I mentioned to the office staff that it was great to be out there and seeing parents early in the morning and actually you know, having those kinds of conversations with them. So please expect to see me out early at a number of the schools. I'll be out there in the morning. Uh, any of you are welcome to join me uh, in talking to parents and, and hearing what their concerns are. 
So uh, again, that was very beneficial. Thank you, um, and I will continue to follow up. Um, and any any concerns you have, uh, please bring them our way. Um, next, uh, I'd also <clears throat> like to talk about <clears throat> as we continue to talk about grants. On Friday, I was at the <clears throat> Kennedy School, and I was there because of a grant uh, that was brought to us by Representatives Cronin uh, and Cassidy. Uh, and, and it might be thought of as a small grant, but it, it comes to us twofold. One is it, is it is a grant from a company called Pharma. And what they gave us is money to put towards our elementary uh, is engineering uh, program. Uh, en I'm sorry, engineering is elementary program. It is a STEM program. The students actually demonstrated what they're doing in science. These kits are very expensive. They're probably $1,000 a kit. Um, this is the kind of, when we talk about businesses, and you'll hear me talk about businesses and collaboration when I do a, a report on our advocacy efforts. But we are looking for businesses, whether it's a grant, whether it's an in-kind, whatever way that you can support our students in school. Uh, the company enjoyed watching the children, you know, hearing about their STEM initiatives. And this positions us very well for other, you know, small grants. You heard the story last week about a small grant for $2,000 that the Angelo that turned into, and that check came. That check came for $10,000 with an anonymous donor who was part of the Brockton Public School System at one time and wanted to give back. So I, I, I want to say that to the community. I want to thank Representative uh, Cronin and Cassidy. I do have to tell you on a funny note, when I got there, Principal Rogan was all excited to give me a gift. And I usually don't get gifts when I visit the schools. Other than if I go to the Davis, I always get a t-shirt. Love the Davis t-shirts. So I get a gift, I open it up, and it is a paperweight. More than a wrestler? More than a wrestler. <laughs> that, that was, hey, I don't have little boys. That was a first for me. I actually had fun in the little boys aisle looking at toys. So anyway, so Principal Rogan gives me a gift. And I open the gift up, and the kids are looking, and they're waiting to see. And the paperweight says, Sometimes all you need is a billion dollars. <laughs> and I loved it. And I said to the kids, I said, what do you think I'll do with a billion dollars? And of course, one young kid says, you know, you're going to go on a trip. You're going to, you know, all of those things that I would love to do with a billion dollars. And finally, one youngster says, it's for the schools. So, <laughs> so I loved that, that uh, hopefully we can be so lucky to, to have that bring us some luck as far as our budgeting goes. So thank you to Principal Rogan. In talking about the um, advocacy, one of the things that I'm working with our principals on, and we did put together uh, a sample letter for our principals, because one thing that I know is you have parents that own businesses that have children in our schools. I don't care if it's a landscaping business, and they could do some in-kind for our school. So when we talk about adopting a school, it isn't a big, giant business having to adopt a school. It could be a small business. It could be in-kind. It could be volunteering. It can be so many things. I've had uh, conversations with um, the uh, Metro South uh, Chamber of Commerce, uh, Chris Cooney, the executive director, and a couple of things that are already on my plate. I welcome you to join me. I am going to be speaking before the December breakfast of the Metro South Chamber, any of you that are members, and I am going to be talking about our business collaborations. We're also going to have a table at the November uh, Metro South event, which is the legislative luncheon. And again, we're going to be asking businesses. We're also planning a business leaders summit where we do bring in, I've already been doing some outreach with some of our larger businesses in Brockton, asking them to come on board and be a, a founding member and supporting uh, our schools. There's also an article when you get the Metro South Chamber paper that comes in, I believe, the Enterprise. You know, open it up and there is going to be an article on ways that you can support. You know, Josh said it best tonight wearing his shirt. Brockton kids count. So we have a number of ways. Um, donate material, supplies, in-kind services. You could be, I, I mentioned a cleaning service. You could go to a local cleaners. They could donate a gift certificate because as we talk about culture and climate and even supporting the good work going on in our schools. I talked about the um, red apples for the teachers, the golden apples on opening day. So looking for even a gift certificate to, to give to, in a raffle to our teachers that are winning the awards for going above and beyond and getting grants and doing so many things to support our schools. So adopt a school, a grade, or a class. If you're a large business, you might be able to adopt a school. If you're a small business, 
maybe you're able to adopt a class. If you're a medium-sized business, maybe you're able to actually adopt a grade at a particular school, which could be three, four, five classes. Volunteer your company or employees to volunteer in our classrooms, to work on school projects, to mentor, to hire our students when we talk about summer internship programs. Every business out there, whether you're a Brockton business, whether you're a, a Brockton uh, owner and has a business outside of Brockton, we are looking for people to come in and support our schools. And we also left room for their own ideas of ways that they can support. So this is going to be a big push uh, in uh, our advocacy campaign. Uh, I hope that, that at the end of the year, we have two, three, four, five businesses that are involved with our schools. So we are doing an outreach, not only from a central office point of view, citywide, but also looking for our principals to start to get support um, through the uh, many organizations. And again, I, I wanna thank again the Confucius Institute performance. I will tell you, um, when you talk about our Chinese language program, part of that is learning about another culture. And we have had organizations that have come from China. We did have something scheduled for September. They were not able to get here because of immigration changes. So because of those changes, the UMass um, Boston uh, Confucius um, classroom, Confucius Institute uh, classroom performance came to Brockton today, well over an hour of, um, again, of presenting culture to our students. It was very, very well received. And these are the kind of things that we can continue to do. And, and we, we talk about what's happening in the world. What this does is make the world a better place because you understand another culture. You actually have dialogue. Um, I have to tell you, I thought it was very interesting uh, in the middle of talking to the Chinese educators, um, the administrators of the Confucius program, they wanted to know if I could go there in December. I told them that maybe this December, it was a little too quick for me, but they wanted to go and have you actually come and see a, a Chinese classroom to, to see what their education is from the smallest students, certainly to their college students. So that's a wonderful thing for the district. Um, I will certainly you know, speak to them and we'll see if we have an opportunity to send someone. But they were very gracious and it was wonderful for us students. Lisa. school and see the performance but what a challenging language it is our students that are taking Chinese and to hear my daughter come home and say how much it's her favorite class and her favorite teacher really you know is shows how beneficial this program is and she struggles with this you know the homework and she was up for hours working on it the other night but she still says this is her favorite class and her favorite teacher so I just wanted to share that well, I struggled with hello, and I think it was welcome, and Dr. Murray was helping me with, with ni hao, right. So it, you're right, I can't even imagine. Um, I was in awe today. I just loved the um, commitment from the college students. I believe they're from Shanghai University in China, and it is 100 miles southwest of Shanghai. I didn't really get a chance. I, I went up and certainly you know, congratulated them, thanked them for everything that they brought. They're on a tour right now uh, in the New England states. So we were very fortunate to have that here and fortunate for our students. I'd like to also uh, announce um, our uh, associate principals. We have had our interviews. We have had our selections. I am recommending to you uh, the hire, and I want to remind everybody that this is money we had under Title IIa. I also want to remind you that we had a $450 reduction, a $450,000 reduction in that line item, which supports coaching for our middle schools. Our associate principals, again, are involved in uh, supporting our teachers, supporting um, our you know, level one and level two schools, continuing to, to show uh, changes in our middle schools. And it really was the support of that leadership team coming into play. And not only having a principal, an assistant principal, but having an associate principal, you know, focusing on instruction for all our students. So I want to welcome, um, first of all, you continue, and I want to thank the principals at the middle school. It isn't easy to sit with the superintendent when previously you might have had an associate principal in every school, and we're doing our best now, and what we're doing is supporting and sharing. And when these principals came together, there were principals that had a full-time associate principal and presently are sharing. We continue to look for grant money. I still have a little bit of grant money. I was actually hoping for a fourth, especially where you have three brand new principals you know, at your middle school level. 
So um, I want to thank Michelle Connors, who actually is here again this evening with me. Michelle, you know, is a doctoral uh, student at BC um, in educational leadership. And she right now has been supporting East Middle School. Um, she is now going to, for the present time, support North Middle School, which has a very similar population to East Middle School. So Michelle will be sharing. Nate Crossman will continue to support the Davis. We lost a Title I teacher there. I'm going to leave him there full time at the Davis. And I want to welcome your three new hires. Uh, John Lynch uh, recently, two years ago, did, did his administrative internship program. He's involved in um, head teacher, um, previously is now one of our Ed, uh, Ed Aval, uh specialists. Uh, he's been uh, instrumental in many things at the Asheville School. He will be leaving the Asheville School, and he will be a full-time associate principal at South Middle School. And we were laughing about the Campbell and Campbell at West Middle School. We now have Lynch and Lynch at South Middle School. Uh, I want to welcome again uh, Eileen McQuaid, a longtime administrator in the Brockton Public Schools. She will be supporting um, the alternative schools. She presently is at the Plouffe as a teacher. She'll be supporting the alternative schools and the Asheville School. So she will be a share between the Huntington Therapeutic School, the Keith Center, which has the, the um, Champion High School and the Fer Frederick Douglass Academy, and she also will be available for Edison Academy. So she will be juggling a number of balls. Also, Jamie Estes, a former um, instructional resource specialist, presently a humanities teacher at the Plouffe School, will be full time at West Middle School. So again, I want to be clear, I welcome them, um, but I am looking for uh, additional grant money. I do have some grant money left over in the title, 2A, uh, not enough to support a salary, uh, and we'll continue to, to uh, look for additional funding. Any questions? And I want to uh, also uh, mention, and you saw up there, um, the Kevin Riley Playground, and, and I know uh, Mr. Sullivan and Mr. D'Agostino were there with me today, uh, was the rededication. Uh, Mr. Sullivan, I'm going to turn it to you because I always say too much, and, and I know this was something that was very special as far as making sure that when we moved the teachers from the Gilmore and the students that this also came along. So I'd just like to say, I'm going to say about six months ago, I was dead against it. I didn't think the move was a, a real good move. And seeing everything today, the new playground, the dedication of the rally, the new fence, all the new grass, the paintings, it's just out of this world. I take my hat off, as I said earlier, to Mike Thomas, and Ken Thompson, and everybody who worked over there. They did one heck of a job. Yeah. It's fabulous. Yeah, it is. And the classrooms are just as nice. You know, the classrooms look like uh, they were made for preschoolers. You know, the colors are vibrant. They're beautiful. They're the right sizes. You know, the bathrooms, the areas. You know, people, and, and I agree with you, the teachers worked very hard. You know, unpacking boxes. The facility department made sure that whatever they needed, you know, they would have school up and going. And yes, you know, they've had to... Um, you know, make some adjustments, make some adjustments in areas where they're doing adaptive phys ed or areas where there are changing areas for our young students. So there are many things that our facility department supported our teachers. There was collaboration. I want to thank Principal Camillo. Uh, I think it's been a great start to school. Yeah, I just like to add, it was, a, it was a nice opportunity to go over there and see the kids get to enjoy the, uh, the new playground and, and rededicate it. Um, and uh, as I said earlier, I, I you know, want to commend um, you know, the staff and faculty and, and parents and students um, because it, it, there were a lot of tough changes in the district this year. And uh, you know, for um, the school to be um, up and running the way it is, that was the community coming together, everybody coming together and making that happen. Um, <clears throat> so, and, and it, it looks great. It looks exactly the way that a, that a preschool should feel. And um, so I also want to commend the efforts of the facilities department. Um, they did a bang up job and, and we went through there before school opened, um, all of us went through. And there were a few things that I had uh, brought up um, to uh, Ken Thomas and, and uh, Deputy Superintendent Thomas and asked them to make a few changes. Um, all of those things had been completed, so I was happy to see that today as well. 
Um, I, I, I have to say the facilities absolutely lived up to everything they promised they could do. Um, so I, it was a pleasure to be there today. I think the best part for Maureen Riley, um, his sister, our custodian, Sue Riley, and the family members to see was when the rededication was finished, the children couldn't wait to get on, you know, all of the equipment. They were, you know, in the playground, they were going up and down the, yep. whatever the bars are called there, they were playing, they were on the sway swing, they were up and down the slides. I mean, they were having a great time. It was just a beautiful day. So congratulations again to the Riley family. We're very pleased to, to rededicate that area in memory of former custodian Kevin Riley, who loved those children. Yeah. And I said he would follow them anywhere. And that's exactly what happened here. So thank you. Uh, on another happy note, I want to remind everybody, when we talk about supporting our staff, we have Staff Appreciation Night coming up at Brockton High School. We also, it's a football game on Friday night, October 13th. Hopefully we get a beautiful Friday evening. We are asking the community to come out also to support our football team. I believe they're playing Durfee. Uh, they could certainly use your support. It's great to see not only our kids uh, playing football, but also that wonderful halftime show, which involved over 200 youngsters at our high school. So hopefully we can get our teachers, our staff, our community to come out and show everybody what, what a great uh, community we have here in Brockton. And I want to also mention uh, last evening, and I know Mr. Sullivan, you were there. I was juggling a couple of events last evening. But we have the Massachusetts PTA and um, Michael Henry, one of our parents from the George School, is very involved in the Massachusetts PTA and brought to us um, a workshop on concussions. And I thought that the information that they presented last evening, um, this was excellent. And, and this is for parents. This is certainly for, for nurses. Uh, we had the athletic terrain, uh, trainer there. Um, it, it's good for everybody to understand, and, and we know that, again, out there with our National Football League, we hear about concussions or any athletes, and we hear about the destructive nature or not paying attention to things that happen to our students. So um, I thought this was fabulous, the magnet to, you know, to hang up on your refrigerator. It talks about signs, symptoms. Um, it even talks about you know, athletes, if you see another athlete take a hit and, and a coach misses it, or making sure that the students speak up for other students. So it was just a, a wonderful presentation. Uh, I'm not sure, Mr. Sullivan, if you want to add. Yeah, it was a two-hour program, or an hour-and-a-half program. It was brought on by Mike Henry, and Linda Brown, Linda Brown come from the state. And what it was was, it was showing us how to recognize concussions as they start. Could be, a, could be just a slap on the head, you could get a concussion out of it. And they were showing uh, things to look for. Somebody was to slip and fall, hit their head on the ground. Somebody was to get hit as a football player, bump their head on the ground, it, especially teammates themselves can say to a coach, I think my friend has got a concussion. Can you take a look? And as all it does is it requires two to three weeks of rest and then you get back to playing. So just to sit down for two weeks is a pretty good idea to save your life. I thought it was interesting with the NFL, and I can't remember the player's name. I remember the quarterback was Aaron Rodgers of the Green Bay Packers. I think it was back in 2010. Yep. And they talked about him taking a hit and the player his you know, teammate came up to him and said, you know, your eyes, Donald Driver. what was the name? Donald Driver. Donald Driver. And he came up and said, buddy, you need, to, you need to sit down. You know, you need to take a break. You know, he came off the field. I'm not sure if they won or lost the game. They won the Super Bowl in the end. They lost the game. They lost the game, and, and that was the point. You might lose the game, but your life is much more important, and teammates need to stick up for teammates. Coaches need to make sure. Um, you know, our nursing staff, our parents, people need to be aware of this, certainly, in protecting the most important thing, the health of our youngsters. And also, I want to give a pitch to um, taking action. This, again, is Massachusetts PTA. Looks like they have wonderful trainings. They're having their second annual health summit. It is at the conference center at Waltham Woods in Waltham, Mass. On, I believe, this is November 16th, uh, 2017. I'm not sure the day of the week it is. I think the 19th is a Sunday, so what would it be, a Thursday? So this is something, if anyone is interested, we can certainly get word out to the PTAs, and I think this is open to, to 
to anyone that would want to register. There was all kinds of uh, great offerings, lots of uh, interesting presenters. So we can get this information out to you to share um, with your PACs and PTAs. And the only other thing I want to finish up with is, again, um, as far as the superintendent's evaluation goes, um, it was presented last week uh, in a subcommittee meeting. We are putting together and we almost have uh, all the evidence. We're trying very hard to put it so you can access it not with all paper copies. So we're trying to give you, we feel, important information. If there are things you want beyond that, you can certainly look at the evaluation and request whatever you would like. Some things are in just paper copies. So we will uh, do our best to finish that up, hopefully, by the end of this week. Any questions? Um, last night I attended the Hancock PTA, which um, was very well attended. Approximately 25 parents were there. And um, it was nice to see a um, influx of some new parents as well. Um, it's a very active PTA. and. Um, they do, you know, like I'm sure many of the PTAs in the city, uh, a lot of good work in terms of fundraising for needy students in the school. So they, they basically you know, fundraise and have um, resources available. You know, if a child you know, needs a winter coat, if a child needs some gloves, if a child needs you know, shoes or sneakers, um, you know, there's a fund ready to go um, for those uh, students that um, are part of the community or may come into the commu Hancock community you know, during the year. So it's nice to see the um, continued support of so many um, thoughtful parents. Um, it was just a very good you know, turnout and it's, it's nice to see them um, continuing to keep the, um, the ideas fresh, coming up with new ideas in terms of fundraising. And, um, um, and I think this year I shamed them because they call um, what they have in December a spaghetti supper, but they serve ziti. It's not <laughs> spaghetti. So I've told them time and time again, but I think this year we're going to get spaghetti. So they'll be, they'll be, like they'll be truthful. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> what can I say? What spaghetti ziti? Well, it's a choice. pasta supper then. It's not right, a spaghetti supper. supper. So let's call it what it is. So, you know, we've got to be accurate here. You Italians so. are tough. Well, you know, we're, we like to be we like to be truthful, when, you know, with our food. I mean, you know, our food is everything, you know. So to some of us, <laughs> to some of us. <laughs> well, I tell you, really not, but you know. <laughs> so, okay. Um, on another note, do we need to go over the extended day requests? Yes. Okay. So um, this evening in finance, uh, we had a presentation from um, <coughs> Ms. Silver and Ms. Dupuy. Um, with respect to the extended day rate increase being imposed by the state. Um, the committee listened attentively to the um, new rates that uh, the state basically is imposing. Um, and the committee unfortunately had to vote to increase um, the rates uh, in order to prevent losing uh, a large uh, multi-million dollar investment from the state in our extended day um, program. So uh, we extended the rates as follows. The before school daily rate went from 794 to 842. The after school rate went from 1668 to 1768. Uh, before and after school went from 2463 to 2611. And the full day rate went from 33 uh, dollars and sixty cents to thirty-five sixty-two. Um, so that is basically uh, the report and what occurred at that um, point in time in the finance subcommittee meeting. Uh, can I get someone to approve those minutes of that subcommittee meeting? Motion to approve that. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Okay. And then the second <coughs> vote would be to adopt the uh, rates as presented uh, so as to prevent any uh, negative financial impact to the district by the state. I need a motion. Yeah, there you go. Raise <laughs> the rate. Second? Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? 
Okay, next item. Items to refer to subcommittee. Um, well, with regard to the superintendent contract, um, you're going to provide us in one of the packets with the updated information? Yes, we'll so, give you access to the evidence that you had uh, okay. requested. Do you believe we need another meeting or can we take that information and basically run with it? Um, certainly everybody received the packet. Uh, I'm available if you'd like to do okay. that. Okay, so if we need, so we'll, we'll receive the information when presented to us in one of the packets and then if members feel they need, do we need to call a meeting, we can do that. If not, we can simply go through the materials and, um, and then I can collect them and then we can uh, basically calculate. Yeah, I, I think the one thing that I have to say in Brockton, and I'm sure people realize that, is with this superintendent and school committee, you know, whether it's the times, you know, we spend quite a bit of time together. So, you know, as far as what happens, it's very unusual in a district, the number of subcommittee meetings, the finance meetings, the budget, the advocacy, the appearances, you know, you're there with the superintendent and certainly our administrative team in so many ways. You know, you're out in the public, you're, you know, at the events, you know, uh, this school committee, again, <clears throat> again, has spent hours and hours involved, and I'm not sure people understand that kind of a commitment. So as far as the evidence goes, we're pleased, and I want to thank uh, school committee woman Plant when she says, I actually enjoy reading about, you know, and, and knows certainly, you know, what's happening in the district, but enjoys reading about minutes or information or things to really, you know, get a handle on what's happening in the district, whether there needs to be uh, improvement in areas, uh, whether there needs to be, um, you know, support for the superintendent. So I think it is uh, important. I think from here, what we do need to do is finish the evaluation because I would like to take a look at the goals for this coming year. I feel like the goals have changed. I'm pleased with some of the things we've actually achieved, uh, and there's been a lot of things that we've achieved. But I think we need to look going forward in looking at the advocacy, talking about the equity, talking about the Prop 2 and a half override, talking about a number of those things. You heard me talking about technology and one-to-one -one devices. So I do think we need to take a look at that list. We need to take a look at, um, again, a professional practice goal for the superintendent. I'd like to make some recommendations. A student learning goal, um, which certainly will be tied to technology and the MCAS 2.0, which is critical for this district going forward. And also looking at some of the district goals that we previously had. So as quickly as we can finish this round, I think we need to be talking so that the superintendent is aware of the direction of the school committee and what their expectations are. Okay. Um, unfinished business? So. Mr. D'Agostino. So I just wanted to bring up, <clears throat> you know, you mentioned the, all the many subcommittees that we have, um, that school committee members are on, and, you know, I don't think people are aware of necessarily all of those and, and the functions they serve. And um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to be here last night so that they're last, at our last meeting, so this really would have come up under that, at that meeting. But um, one of the things that accounts review with my colleagues, Ms. Uh, Plant and Ms. Asak, came up with or looked into was, you know, we saw some of the cell phone bills for the district and, you know, we're, substantial costs and, and I know we have a lot of administrators that we need to be have connected um, and we actually asked them can you look into a lower cost cell phone provider um, to see if we can save some money there and uh, it, Dan Vigent did did look into that they experimented with a different company to see if we could save some money there unfortunately the service quality wasn't there and so that that didn't work out um, but I did want to bring that up um, you know, as something, a way that we were trying to find ways to save going forward. So we, well, we've settled the budget at this, this point. I mean, you know, we're still working to look for additional ways to save money down the road. Unfortunately, this one didn't happen to pan out, but I just wanted to report to the rest of the committee that we had looked into that. And, and unfortunately, we would have, we would have had a lot of people we weren't able to reach. Yes, we would have saved money, but so there were a lot of folks that we would have needed to get a hold of and wouldn't have been able to if we had gone forward with that. So, and I, and I thank Dan Vision for doing the work to look into that experiment and, and see if that was an option. So. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, 
new business? Executive session? How about adjournment? Motion to adjourn. All in favor? All right, thank you for attending. We are adjourned. Motion to uh, reconvene. Recommence, yeah. reconvene the school committee meeting Check. on October 3rd. Okay. All right, all in favor? Okay, we're reconvened. Uh, just to go back to finance, uh, under report of superintendent of schools, um, in the finance subcommittee meeting, we also took a vote to reinstate uh, three certified positions, health, art, and social studies, as well as two uh, adjustment counselors um, and 11 paraprofessionals, as well as reinstating the JV hockey program. Um, so that is a continuation of that report. Can someone make a motion to approve those minutes? Motion to approve the minutes. Okay. From the finance. All right. Second. Second. Further discussion. All in favor? Okay. And then we just need a vote to ratify and to reinstate those positions. So, Ms. Azak, could you make that motion? Those listed positions. Those listed positions. Okay, which are art, I'm sorry, which are health, art, social studies, two adjustment counselors, 11 paraprofessionals, and the <coughs> hockey program. Correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. A second? Second. All in favor? All right, good. Now a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Great. We are officially adjourned. <laughs>